I've long wanted to try IFI's portable DAC and headphone amps, and especially the Black Label series as they've been extremely popular among enthusiasts. But now that the Black Label series is on the way out, they've sent me the last of it, which is actually blue. It's the IDSD signature. So I'm going to take you through what this can do and what it does and how I thought it sounded and performed with a variety of headphones and in-ear monitors. To start with, let's take a look at the actual device itself, its inputs, outputs, and features, because there's quite a bit. So it's a pretty big unit. I mean, it's it's fairly chunky. It sits nicely on a desk. I mean, if you compare it to something like the Cord Mojo, the Cord Mojo, even if you've got the Poly, is quite a bit smaller. And uh, well, let's just have a look at a, a, a portable player such as this um, HiBR6 I reviewed recently. That's kind of sits nicely on top. It's a bit wider. But still, it's about the same with the case on. It's about almost the same kind of thickness. So, still, it makes the IDSD signature a pretty chunky unit. So it's more in the kind of transportable category than anything. And speaking of, well, let's have a look at the outputs. One of the unique new things about the IDSD signature is that it now has a 4.4 millimeter Pentacon output. And this is the kind of future of headphone connectors, you could call it. Doesn't matter whether the circuit inside is single ended or balanced, it uh, will work with, um, it just has the five connectors necessary for a correct balanced connection. And again, works fine single ended. But you have your usual uh, 6.3 millimeter or quarter inch port here for full sized headphones. And uh, there's an adapter in the box for uh, 3.5 if necessary. So, but the inclusion, I, I just want to note, the inclusion of a 4.4 millimeter port does not mean that the circuit inside is balanced. This is still single-ended internally, but it does allow future compatibility. And I think this combination is a good one going forward. Either 4.4 with uh, the 6.3 or 4.4 with 3.5 millimeter should be the future, I reckon, of all headphone-based uh, amplification. So the other output on there is a good old pair of RCA ports. And so you can hook this up like as a DAC to another headphone amplifier or another device of choice, which will give act as a uh, DAC. And I, I did that as well, which I'll talk about in the sound impressions. Of the inputs, well, you have a SPDIF input. This can be either coaxial, digital, or optical. So you can use a uh, mini Toslink to, uh, cable, or you can use an SPDIF cable. Now, if you need an adapter for that, well, if you get one of these adapters, such as this Sony RCA to 3.5 millimeter TS plug, you just plug that in thus, and there's your standard kind of uh, RCA coax digital input. And with the other input, this is where things get a little bit interesting, is the USB input. Now, USB input, if you have not seen any IFI products before, you're probably wondering, why are they using a full-size USB-A plug? Not socket, plug. And you think that is the wackiest thing you've ever seen. Well, actually, it makes a lot of sense when you realize how this was originally designed to be hooked up. Or I should say the iFi products in general designed to be hooked up. They were designed to be used, say, with a camera connection kit for an iPhone. Or this is the USB-C equivalent because I'm using my camera connection kit to make this video. And, you know, it has a... Uh, you go from your phone or whatever on one end, or your computer, I should say, to a full-size usb a socket, so it's an adapter to give you a full-size USB-A socket on a phone or a um, computer or tablet which only has USB-C or in the case of iPhones, a lightning connector. So all you do is you just take it and then you plug it in thus, and there you just stack your phone on top or your um, DAP as we had before, and plug in, and there you have an audio stack, an old school audio stack almost. And so. Then the question comes, what happens if you want to hook it up to a computer? You think, oh, that's very odd. How do you do that? Well, in the box, they have a whole bunch of accessories here, which will get out a nice pad for putting on, on top so you don't scratch your uh, phone by you know stacking it, and a whole bunch of cables and adapters and accessories, which answer all your questions pretty in a pretty quick manner. This is a USB 3 extension cable. You get the idea now? You just use this to hook up to your computer. Now, this isn't a USB 3 device. They've chosen a USB 3 cable because it is, for the higher transmission speeds, better shielded and better made, but still cheap. So then you just plug that in thus, and uh, plug that into your computer on the other end. Now, if you still want to use, of course, uh, and some other regular USB cable, they have a regular 
kind of adapter for that and uh, well like a USB like a cable joiner and you just plug that in and there's your regular USB B socket if you want to use it with your some fancy USB cable or a longer one or whatever. Now charging doesn't happen via that socket, charging happens via this USB-C socket on the side and it can plug, stay, you can plug it in and, and stay charged continuously and then for that end you know you just have, if you want to use it like say with a nearby uh, computer you can just use a short USB-C cable which they've included and plug that into your, into your laptop or whatever and it will charge although it is pretty short I wonder why they didn't include a longer one but since you longer ones are readily available I don't think it's a big issue and you have a nice fancy 3.5 millimeter adapter for the front which once you look at it, it doesn't actually stick out that much more than you'd expect but again this is kind of more transportable than portable and if you do have a Toslink cable and you need an adapter well they included a little adapter there for mini, to mini, um, mini optical to uh, use as the input so that's basically the overview of, of uh, the inputs and outputs and well if we look on the bottom this is where we get into the features and functionality and rather like those people who have uh, modified their cars and stuck stickers of every component manufacturer on their rear windows and uh, they can't even see out for the number of stuff they've added IFI have done much the same and badged the crap out of their DSD signature with um, every little bit of component feature and whatever that they have in there but the relevant ones are kind of written in white text here such as the power mode which is a fancy name for the gain system more or less it may, uh, well actually it is a power mode I suppose because you have echo normal and turbo and they correspond to more power for you know bigger headphones and less power for in-ear monitors and uh, less power means longer battery life so your long listening sessions with IEMs are readily possible and if you're home and plugged into a computer you can break out the full-sized headphones and and uh, you'll get plenty of power there now the digital filter is something that with the stock firmware which is 5.3c will have zero effect if you downgrade the firmware which you can download from IFI site to say 5.2 I think it's 5.2 or 5.2c I forget uh, you lose the MQA functionality but you do get the uh, ability to switch between non oversampling uh, a minimum phase filter and a uh, something it's either a brick wall or a uh, linear phase filter and uh, that will allow you can you can switch between those but if you're in the, the stock firmware it has no effect it just uses uh, IFI's GTO filter uh, if you whichever switch position that's in the IEM match is a more relevant one and uh, this allows very sensitive IEMs to reduce hiss so this at set it off the output impedance is below one ohm but the problem with having below one ohm output impedance is that hiss with very sensitive IEMs can be louder so you can switch this up to a uh, high sensitivity or ultra sensitivity and it will increase the output impedance to two and a half ohms or so and uh, reduce the output so that uh, you don't get uh, as much hiss or re reduce hiss very considerably but the only problem I had with this was I forget to turn it off and then I put it in turbo mode and wonder why the sound was all distorted and then I forgot to turn the IEM match off I thought maybe the battery had gone bad or something had gone bad but nope I'd accidentally left the IEM match on so a bit of a caution note there uh, the two other features which of course are relevant uh, if you're an IFI owning person you'll already know about these if not the extra bass which of course boosts the bass up which is nice with fairly neutralish sounding headphones to give it it gives a bit of a bump I forgot how many decibels it's something like about 3 dB but enough to be comfortably boosted but not overblown which is nice and the 3D mode which makes the sound well more open-ish uh, well that's the impression but they're kind of nice things to have if you do want to kind of tweak the sound of the the headphones you have other than that you have functionality you turn the uh, switch on which includes the volume control and you have this light that indicates which uh, the the fun what's happening at the moment in this case it's it should be flashing green because there's no nothing connected at all and uh, it will indicate different colors depending on the sample rate of the music whether it's high res or not and uh, then you have the volume control the only downside to this volume control is is that you get bad channel imbalance until you get up to about 10 o'clock but with the other ability to adjust the gain say if the um, if it's too loud somewhere around there you can always just switch it down a mode and then you can run the volume control up to where it just doesn't have any channel imbalance though a couple of people have received these with like really bad volume controls I think it was not a good idea to include the uh, power switch in the volume control separate would have been a good idea because then you can get uh, you, you avoid this problem with uh, bad volume pots which you, the combination seems to uh, call, have an issue with so that's kind of the overview and now you're probably wondering well 
how what are my impressions of how it sounded when listening with music and so let's get on with that I listened to both in-ear monitors and full-sized headphones with the uh, IDSD signature. Now, if you want the too long, didn't read version, it's very warm and engaging and very kind of just pleasant to listen with, whether you are using in-ear monitors or full-sized headphones. It just had that, that factor of just making listening generally enjoyable, kind of warm, punchy, really kind of, especially in the bass, that was very noticeable. And the power output was most noticeable with things like these planar headphones, Meze Empyreans, and similar like uh, the Final D8000 Pro, Focal Utopias, and that kind of thing, high-end headphones, where that kind of warmer, punchier bass sound really made it kind of uh, satisfying, as even as a desktop amp would. Now, in that, well, onto the in-ear monitors, I do my usual test with the Campfire Audio Andromeders because they're very sensitive in-ear monitors. Now, of course, IFI gear is geared towards sensitive in-ear monitors with the IEM match settings. The only problem I had with that is that when I did engage it, I did seem to lose a little bit of bass from the Andromeda's, which wasn't always kind of the best. And uh, that was kind of, especially, it was actually the middle position I seemed to lose the most, and maybe a bit less so in the ultra sensitivity position, which is kind of odd, but well, that was the way things were. And I guess it may be the factor of increasing the output impedance slightly that you do get a slight drop in the bass because the, imp the uh, impedance of the Andromeda's isn't, even throughout the frequency range, it does change. So that can, especially if you have something with a, a slightly higher than zero output impedance, you can get a bit of a frequency response change and you de do tend to lose some bass in that. So that was the kind of only, kind of maybe negative thing. And you do seem to lose a little bit of punch in the bass having it in less than turbo mode with full sized headphones. So a bit of variance in there in how it did perform depending on the kind of setup you did have here with uh, either the power mode or the IEM match. But all the same still, I mean, it didn't really lose its character of just being enjoyable and, and, and good to listen with. Maybe some uh, more fine details came out when I compared it to other devices. Now, in the past, I have reviewed the, the uh, XDSD, and this is one of the, the devices I really liked. It's a competitor to the Mojo. I've reviewed it before. Uh, unlike it has, you know, the 3D mode and the extra bass, and um, it has Bluetooth as well. So it, it kind of was supposed to be the future of the Nano series for IFI, although I don't know where IFI is going with that. And of course, it's about, you know, it's about half the size and it's a bit less thick. And well, you know, about the size of, well, a Mojo or slightly bigger maybe because of the Bluetooth. And in that, so I, if you to recap, if you haven't seen my review of the XDSD, I found it very slightly behind sonically than the Mojo. I mean, it's kind of hard to compete with the really high tech and 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 a very and the advanced technology that's in here, unique technology. And but all the same, you know, this is made down to a price as well, and it does a really good job. And in that, I kind of found that the the sound quality of the IDSD signature was kind of more comparable to the XDSD. And maybe, you know, it was kind of, you know, apples and oranges versus this and the Mojo, for example, in that maybe the Mojo had a slight bit more clarity. It kind of, found, I felt like I was feeling, you know, the, the precision and detail of the sound came out a bit better with the Mojo. That's with whether with full-sized headphones or in-ear monitors and a little bit more precise without, without losing kind of a little bit of warmth. Whereas the XDSD signature had kind of more punch in the bass and, and kind of more engagement in that way. So I couldn't say that one is necessarily better than the other, although maybe technically the Mojo is better. I found that both were really nice to listen with. And the advantage of the IDSD signature, of course, and of course things like the XDSD, is that you can, you know, switch on the, uh, you can switch on the extra bass and 3D mode if you desire. So it's kind of more of a choice of maybe more technically compromised, but kind of more engaging sound, whereas you kind of slightly more precise and uh, accurate sound, but engaging because of that. So it was kind of a little, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other in there, but both were eclipsed by something like the setup I have on my desk, which I'm, I'm preparing for review, the uh, shit audio Jotunheim, and uh, that hooked up into things like uh, the, the Bifrost or the Yggdrasil, well and truly eclipsed both of these as far as desktop rigs go. But again, they're kind of different setups. And it's also the same, much the same using them as a DAC to something like a headphone app. It was much the same kind of difference. You had the, this was actually very engaging as a DAC to the, I just, for example, plugged it into a, a Master 9 headphone amp. Really, really nice DAC. And again, that, that kind of engaging sound came out that uh, the, uh, 
iFi DACs are really known for. And it was a bit of a difference kind of to the Mojo, which again had the slightly more maybe technically accurate and precise sound, but maybe in some respect a touch less engagement. So it's kind of, yeah, different, different kind of character. And of course the advantage you get over, you know, a DAP again is you have powerful full-sized headphones that you normally wouldn't out of a DAP that seem to weather most DAPs at, you know, this kind of price range, like the six, what is it, around $649 they're asking, we are going to kind of run out of steam if you do turn the volume up, you know, with a pair of headphones like these. So as things go, you know, I really like the IDSD signature and I really nice to have a chance on on IFI's kind of last black label, or the, this would maybe you might call it a blue label given the case. And, you know, now I really understand why these the, the uh, IFI products are really so popular with people because it was just really enjoyable to, to listen with. And it's the kind of device I might... If I was the kind of person who had to go to an office and park something on my desk with a pair of headphones, this would be high on my list of things I, I might consider to take with me. So that was kind of my, that's my impressions of iFi's IDSD signature. As always, before you go, don't forget that these videos are supported by people such as yourself. And if you'd like to become a supporter, if you'd like my buying advice, you'd like help, you know, setting up a system and don't want to make mistakes and, you know, my advice will could save you a lot more money than uh, the little bit I'm asking you to help out in in helping me make these videos. So if you do have any questions, comments, or criticism, do consider becoming a supporter, and you can actually influence how these videos are made and get to see a lot of stuff behind the scenes as and uh, get a lot of extra information as well. So as always, thanks once again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you online.